You're absolutely gonna love the seven day serve challenge. This is the most detailed serve training you're gonna get on the internet this year. You're getting an at home lesson every day. You're getting an on court lesson every day. You even can get one on one personal coaching from me. If you wanna send your serve to me, I'll analyze it for free. So don't forget to go up in the card section, in the description section. Let's get started with today's lesson. Turned into a raffle to win $100. Okay guys, so let's get into our inspiration of the day, which is the great Roger Federer, we're watching him hit a serve here in slow motion, and then we're gonna rewind it, and we're gonna take a look at uh, 12 key elements of the serve. I know that sounds like a lot, but as we go through our seven day serve challenge, we're gonna break it down into bite-sized chunks, which is really the best way to practice. So there's a beautiful serve by Federer, uh, I'm rewinding it right now, and I'm going to start pointing out these 12 key elements. I've got this stylus here, which doesn't write very well on the iPad, so it's going to be like trick and scratch. But I think you'll see very clearly that when I point these 12 key elements out, they're really important and are going to make your serve a whole lot better. So, key element number one, and he's just in warm up mode too, so his legs will probably even be a little wider is the stance, okay? So key element number one, I'm just gonna come here and write, and it's the, I think I have to write in cursive to really make this work. So it's the stance, okay? Again, it's chicken scratch, but just so you can kind of follow all the key elements. Now notice how his legs are going like that, right? They're not straight back, they're not out to the side like that. So we're just gonna undo this here and I'm gonna blow this up. So you can see this. I like how his toe is basically coming right inside his sneaker and he might even widen this base. He might even widen this base when he plays, okay? But that's the stance that he's in and what it's gonna help with. So why the stance is such a big deal and you don't wanna overlook it is what the stance is gonna help with, guys, is when he goes and starts to go into his serve, and notice how his toss also uh, moves out here. See, look how his toss is not just straight into the court, but he's coming out here to the side with his toss, which we'll get into as, as well this week, uh, really learning how to do this exactly like Fetter. But we can see that his chest is pointing back towards us, that it's pointing back towards us, we can see it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to easily do this. It's pretty simple, um, but we wanna do some drills on court together today to really get the feeling of it. Uh, so I've got some cool ideas for you to do. This practice gonna be really easy to go through. Okay, so that's number one. Now, the next thing that I want you to notice is this little thing that he's doing. Let's zoom in on his wrist. So key element two is a relaxed wrist, and you're gonna be relaxed in a couple of key positions. Some of you may not come down here with your racket, but I know players that do come down here with a racket, um, they're, they're holding their wrist very loose so they can whip, okay? Also, when they come up here, the wrist gets nice relaxed, where a lot of recreational players, it's like, it's like a flat board. So the wrist is key, as you can see here, for Mr. Federer, and you've watched Djokovic, he does it, uh, Rafa does it, because they all kind of come down here too. Andy Roddick would more do it up here. So uh, let me just come here. And uh, so now we've got uh, number one, we've got the stance, and number two is the wrist, okay? And as you can see, this is, this is chicken strats. I'm just gonna leave the W there. The W stands for wrist. Okay, let's get into the next key move. Hold on, I gotta stop this. Okay, so our next key fundamental move is we're gonna look at the toss release. And I had a big problem actually, guys, with the toss release. I used to toss the ball super embarrassing. I used to toss the ball way over there and have to chase it. Don't chase your toss like I had to do. As when I heard this one awesome tip from a USPTA professional, so that's why it's always good to keep your education going because you never know what magical tip you're gonna get, and this might be it for you, is 
he said the nose always knows. So release your toss at the nose. So it's not running one way or the other for you. And if you look at Federer's toss release here, it's pretty much, you can see it's about leaving the hand at the nose, maybe the eyes. So I think the nose or the eyes, either one of those cues is really gonna make a big difference for you. If you find that sometimes your toss goes too far over your head or it goes too far out in front, you just find it's all over the place. It's a great uh, thing to kind of get your toss consistent. Okay, so after we leave that key fundamental, we go into the next key fundamental, which is the tilt, okay? So the tilt is our next key fundamental here, guys. And the tilt is what separates uh, the pros from the Joes, I like to say, because whenever I look at a professional, it's su such a beautiful move. They all get into that deep tilt and a lot of recreational players, their shoulders are even or even going this way, which is gonna hurt your shoulder and take tons of power away. So you don't wanna be in this position, you wanna get yourself into the tilt and we're gonna make sure that we cover this and get really good at this this week because it's gonna make a big difference in your extension going up to hit the ball, which is gonna add a lot of power. Uh, so this really sets up the power and you can see that Federer also at this point is into something. I love this position right here. He's in the something that I call the secret power source. So the secret power source is the next key serve fundamental that we wanna master. If you watch my videos, you know I talk about it all the time, but look how beautiful Fetter is set up there. And, and we notice that again, that wrist is in a nice, relaxed position. And I find that Fetter and Roddick, they do such a great job of getting this position. Take a look at that wrist, okay? Super relaxed. This helps him to like come here and get into a really big whipping motion. So that's the next thing we're gonna be working on in our seven day serve challenge. We've got lots of great exercises to do this. And uh, after the secret power source, okay, our next key move that we wanna be working on this week is the leg drive, okay? So I'm just gonna go, um, let me draw here, because I like to draw, LD, okay? The leg, the leg drive is the next key fundamental move. and. What's interesting is the pros, before you actually see their legs go up, they're thinking about going up. So that's when the racket's gonna start going back behind their head. If you go back before this move, you're gonna lose again tons of power. You're gonna have a lot of leaks in your serve. So Federer here, he basically right now, his knees are bent and he's starting to really think about it. He's thinking just one last final time. He's starting to think about shooting himself up. And once he shoots himself up, then the racket's going to go back here. And this happens a lot faster, obviously, uh, in regular time than it does going frame by frame. But you can see now he's, now he's basically getting, raising his, he's getting on his tippy toes. He's going up in the air. And now the racket's dropping behind his head. And so that's the next thing. We got the leg drive and then the racket drop. Okay. And with the racket drop, there's two ways to do it that's acceptable. Number one, obviously, Mr. Federer, it's acceptable. You see how his strings are basically facing towards the stands? That's one way you can do it, okay? The other way is like Serena, who also has an awesome serve. Her strings will be more facing in towards her back. That is okay too, and that's what I do. What isn't okay, what is a no-no, is to get here doing this into the frying pan position, which we're gonna work a lot on how to get out of doing that, correcting that, because I think that's, again, one of the key fundamentals in, on these 12 that's a big gotcha that a lot of people just can't figure out on their own. I got your back this week with our seven-day serve challenge. And once he does that, now he's getting up and he's attacking the ball on edge. Okay, so Mr. Federer now is attacking the ball on edge. This again, because it just seems like it's like a, ma it's a matter of trust. It's like, how am I going to attack the ball at the edge of the racket the way Federer is right here? And how am I going to hit the tennis ball? It just, it just looks crazy. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, how is he going to hit the tennis ball? But once you learn the proper swing path, it's not actually as complicated as you think it was, think it is, and it's not that hard to do. So now the next move is what I call the moment of truth. And that's when you get ready to hit the ball. So you come out of the uh, edge of power into the moment of truth, which is your contact point. You can see how Feather's nice and extended there. Okay, his arms straight up there, out to the side a little bit. So really take a good look at how he's doing this in his moment of truth position. And he's hitting the ball. 
And then after the moment of truth, the next key fundamental is the pronation, which again, if you set up a lot of this stuff just perfectly before you hit the ball, a lot of this stuff starts to go quickly where you're not even having to think about it. And so, so many people kind of overthink pronation. And then finally, we're gonna get into our last two moves, which is the landing. That's key fundamental number 11 is your landing and you wanna make sure, look, look how Federer's toe is landing and it's pretty much in line with the box that he's hitting, okay? So perfect balance when you're landing and you gotta work on your recovery. We're gonna do some drills on that. People really don't work on that and that's a big no-no. That's why you're missing within your first three shots most of the time. And then the follow through, okay? So those are the 12 key fundamentals that we're gonna be going over in our seven day serve challenge. And so let's get going. I'm super excited and we're gonna work on just two key fundamentals today that uh, are huge. That's gonna really set up a great foundation for your serve. So let's jump right in.